Good morning. How about a sip of coffee? I've got my Cross and Crown Lutheran School official cup. Today, the second Sunday in Advent, we're going to remember somebody you never heard of, Nicholas. Well, I guess you did hear about Nicholas with a slightly different name, Santa Claus. You ever heard of that? Santa Claus was named after Nicholas, Bishop of Myrna, Central Turkey, that Turkey used to be a Christian country before it was taken over by Islam. And we remember Nicholas of Myrna died on this day, 342 AD, we think. He becomes the patron saint of anonymous gift giving, although at Christmas we Sometimes <laughs> tell, tell the people who are receiving our gifts that we're the ones that did it. Be that as it may, Bishop of Myrna, patron saint of random acts of kindness. Let's open our worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Testament reading from book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term and that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert the highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lamb in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently 
lead the mother's sheep. Word of God, word of life. Our psalm on the feast day of St. Nicholas is Psalm 85, and as I read this, I'll show you a little art. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and will make a path for his steps. Word of God, word of life. I think it's the givingness of God in grace to the chosen people of Israel, as well as the emphasis on giving, even if it means personal self-sacrifice on the part of Jesus that inspired first St. Nicholas and today inspires us through the symbol of Santa Claus. The epistle today is from 2 Peter 3, 8 through 15. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and the thousand years is like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as you think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting your need to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the, Lord, the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in, men, in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for a hesitating and coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved? And the elements will, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we will wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or Blemish, 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 and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Salvation. Word of God, word of life. Chapter 1, 1 through 8. 
the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messengers ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, now John was clothed with camel's hair with a lever leather belt around his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and uh, untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. Advent is a time in which we look forward to the future. Oh yes, we look forward to Christmas and New Year's, but beyond that to God's grand future that God has planned for us. If you've begun your Christmas shopping, and if you are in the mood, I know it's kind of hard to get into the mood of Christmas here, uh, when we're beset with a plague, the coronavirus plague, but if you are inspired by giving gifts, and we think more about giving gifts than getting them this time of year, we can thank in part God who blessed the ancient Hebrew people of Israel, and we can thank God for the givingness of Jesus, and thank God also for this guy I'd like to talk about briefly, namely St. Nicholas of Myra. I sometimes confuse the city of Myra with Myrna Kapler. It was Myra, not Myrna. This bishop, staunch, respected Christian person, was thrown into prison during the persecution by the Romans of the Christian. Christians under the reign of Emperor Diocletian. Later, Constantine, the Roman emperor, converted to Christianity and St. Nicholas got out of jail. Now, St. Nicholas was known, he had a reputation for giving gifts, especially anonymous gifts. Now, there is a story, kind of a legend, and it goes something like this. A man near Myra had three daughters. The family was poor. And in those days, for a daughter to get married, there had to be a dowry that would be transferred from the daughter's family to the husband's family. And he didn't have the money. Well, women in those days couldn't go off to the university and get an education. There wasn't much in the way of employment and sometimes impoverished young women took up occupations of ill repute. 
And so there was a risk <laughs> that this family might be in trouble. Secretly, one night, Nicholas walked by the house and through the window he threw a bag of gold coins. And with that money, the man married off his first daughter. When the second daughter was ready for marriage, so, uh, secretly, Nicholas threw a second bag of gold coins into the window of the house late at night. The man was able to put together a dowry and daughter number two got married. So he wondered, the man wondered, do you think it'll happen a third time? So he waited up for two nights looking at that window. And suddenly through the window came a bag of gold coins and he ran out and he grabbed the guy and sure enough, it was Nicholas. And Nicholas said, I'm really glad to help you and your family, but could you keep this a secret, please? This is not to be known in general that we have done this for your daughters. I was kind of a guy. Nicholas was. Do we remember St. Nicholas today? Oh yes, today is his feast day, December 6th. In Germany, they have a little custom on December 6th, their Weihnachtsbahn. The Christmas man comes around and visits the homes and lectures the children on how to be good children. St. Nicholas morphed culturally morphed into the figure of Santa Claus and all kinds of people believe in Santa Claus who don't believe in Jesus Christ and don't care about the Christian church, but they like Santa Claus. They like secret gift giving and gift receiving. Oh, some of us complain that Christmas gets secularized and all those businesses make profits off gift buying, etc. And they want to put Christ back in Christmas. But let's look on the bright side. Isn't it nice that a Christian hero and a Christian tradition has made it outside the church into the secular world? Not only that, the spirit of gift giving and the kind of cheerfulness and joyfulness that goes with it has also had a big impact on our wider culture. 1837, Clement Clark Moore writes a poem which he titled A Visit from St. Nicholas, but... We remember it more by the first line, was the night before Christmas. Do you have it memorized? Well, if you don't, let me read it. "'Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. Have you ever had a sugar plum dance in your head? Well, lots of other things, huh? And mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes did appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment he must be Saint Nick. 
more rapid than eagles his coursers they came and he whistled and shouted and he called them by name now dasher now dancer now prancer and vixen on comet on cupid on donner and blitzen donner and blitzen are german for uh thunder and lightning <laughs> To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head, I was turning around. Down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening a pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheek were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it enriched and circled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings and turned with a jerk. And laying a finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. And he sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Oh, God, that mood of gift-giving, so cheerful, so joyful. Now, some of us might want to growl at Santa Claus. It's too secular. I just want to be grateful <laughs> to all of God's gifts. And maybe the legend of St. Nicholas is a gift to the world's wider culture. That at least one time per year, we can allow that deep impulse of compassion and sharing and giving to express itself, accompanied by a mood of merriment and joy. Well, in these Sundays now, as we approach Christmas, anticipating Christmas and anticipating the coming of the Son of Man on the clouds with great power and glory, we want to cultivate in our hearts an attitude of gratitude. Thank you, God, for all that you've given me. And thank you for Jesus, and thank you for St. Nicholas, and thank you for Santa Claus as well. So that the mood, the impulse, the desire, the passion for gift giving lives on. And for that itself, we are grateful.
Please join me now in the, our prayers of intercession. The Lord be with you. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church and the world and for all those in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and our questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. O Holy Spirit, inspire hope among us. In your mercy, hear our prayer. You can say, hear our prayer out loud. We come to you, O God of resurrection, with feet stuck in the world of the cross. Around us and among us, people are dying by the tens of thousands, now hundreds of thousands, victims of the rampant COVID-19 disease. Like a horse from the apocalypse, the plague gallops through our community without regard to whom it brings grief. As you brought refuge and strength to the psalmist, bring us a portion of that strength here and now. O oh God, you are our sword and our shield. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and Restore balance to ecosystems so that all can, creation can praise you. Oh God, you are our rainbow of promise in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. We pray especially for our divided American society. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Oh God, you are our mighty fortress. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work, especially Nicholas, Nicholas of Myra. Make their generous lives an example for us all. Oh God, you are our inspiration and guide. In your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we turn for those toward those in our congregation and our circle of love and think about special needs, especially Paul, Paula, Barb, Richard, Lynn, Jonita, Deborah. Richard, Stephen, Ditka, Lynn, Abigail, and Linda. Keeping in mind those with long-term healing concerns, Joanne, Carol, Chris, Chris, Roger, Sawyer, Ed, Gabe, Mark, Kendra, and those homebound, Robert and Leona, Dick and Dorothy, Ruth, Pastor Leon, Beverly, and Ginny. Oh God, you are the healer of our every ill. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks, O oh God, for all who have died in the faith and bring us at the final resurrection into your, or your everlasting life. 
where sorrows will be no more. Into your gracious and mighty hands, O God, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, let's turn now to Holy Communion, and hopefully you have uh, brought your bread and wine, and if not, take a moment to go and get your bread and wine or wine substitute. And let us remember the words of Jesus during that first Lord's Supper. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to everyone to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the, today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you, given for me, given for the world. The blood of Christ, shed for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Now may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy and precious blood strengthen and preserve you now and forever. Amen. Well, Advent 2, next week, Advent 3. It's going to be a special Sunday. Yes, we're going to worship here this morning, uh, in the morning, online. But at the same time, we'll have a special event. We'll have a baptism and we'll have confirmation but we'll do that in a separate communion worship service so i will see you next sunday right here almighty god father son holy spirit bless us all now and forever amen Thank you.